and welcome everybody, boys and girls and everyone else, it's your boy LF Jake. Today we start a new playthrough, the Banner Saga 2. We have just recently completed Banner Saga, the first game, and I want to get straight through the whole story, so we're going to go Banner Saga 2, and then once we've completed this one, go to Banner Saga 3. For the YouTube series, because we're uploading these streams onto YouTube, I don't know whether I want to make this Season 2, Episode 1, or, you know, the last game was 7 episodes, do I make this Episode 8, or do I just do it as a completely separate series and just put Episode 1? I don't know. If you're watching this on YouTube, you already know, because you've seen what I decided to go with. Uh, but yeah, a new game. Interestingly, I get a survival mode in the bottom left, but I've noticed that when I press that, it takes me to the PlayStation Store. But it looks like a fun game mode, so I'll try that once we're done with this. And there's also a watch recap. Now I don't know, I don't think, this will take the choices that I made in the first game into account. We have the heraldry, like we did from the first game. We picked uh, this one, so we'll stick with it. Uh, I guess, yeah. Let's watch what happened last time in the Banner Saga. When the sun stopped in the sky, life continued as normal. Then the stone-armored dredge reappeared. Ancient foes from the far northern reaches and the world was thrown into chaos. Giant Varl defenders were slaughtered, their strongholds destroyed. Now Hakon is the Varl king and protects who is left of his race. Rook, a humble hunter and father of Alet, found himself leading frightened clansmen towards safety. His caravan crossed paths with Juno and Ivand, two of the mysterious spellweavers known as Menders, who know something about the massive mountain-breaking serpent on the loose. In Borsgard, a town under the protection of the mercenary leader, Bolverg, both Varl and human stood against a dredge general. The immortal Sunder, known as Bellower. Juno devised a way to stop Bellower. But it cost the life of one held dear. The saga continues. Ooh. Okay, a couple things to take from this. One, I'm correctly pronouncing everyone's name. This is great news. Two, it didn't specifically say that Alette died. So, does that mean that... Maybe it could have been Alette, maybe it could have been Rook? Who knows? We are going to jump straight into a new game. Ah. Oh. Yeah. So if Rook had the bow... He would have died if he had the silver arrow and I let. Okay, let's import our old save game. Uh, yep, this is it. Let's go. So old choices made in the first game directly impact this one. Like waves on a coast. Some more fierce, more violent than others. So few of my kind, the giant war, remain alive. Even so, I find myself wondering if humans, while able to bear children, suffer more for the loss of loved ones. Several weeks have passed since we slew the Sunder known as Bellower, but the chaos of the world did not wither as we hoped. The world is breaking. We sail aboard hastily crafted ships for the safety of Arborain, the human capital. 
But the river curses us with a clear view of the dreads, assaulting another hopeless village. So for context, guys, Saga Part Sa the Banner Saga 2 came out two years after the first one. So I'm expecting a more polished game. Also, the dredge aren't stone warriors, they're warriors in stone armor. Moving away from those move away from those glowing rocks. This one's mine. Oh dear. Double kill. Triple kill. Oh god. No! No! To the depths with you! Oh! Keep killing them! Oh, it's the boys either! Uh, is that Ingvar on the right? I don't know. Damn it, Rook. Quit running ahead. I was going to give us another tutorial. I thought if I imported my save, it wouldn't give me a tutorial, but that's okay. Uh, it is Hakon. Uh, these portraits show the order of initiative. Taking turns from left to right, your heroes are blue, the enemy is red. Now, I do want to pay attention to the tutorial, just in case they've added any new features. Movements happen before the action. The ring shows that Ivor is active. The blue tiles around him show he can move. Some heroes fill more tiles than others. The horned heroes are a race of giants called Val who take up four tiles each. The exact same tutorial so far. Use the left stick to move to a tile. Press X to move. Again, combat is the exact same. Yep, we know we can do strength damage, which makes them weaker, or armor damage. I'm presuming we've got to go all back to level one. It wouldn't keep their levels from the last game, would it? Uh, some people are out of range, but your heroes can use willpower to boost... All heroes can use willpower to boost their actions. Sundering impact. Select the enemy. When there's one enemy left, it's no longer boy, girl, boy, girl. Yep, some people can't do anything and they should just rest on their turn. Some people have got rangy attacks. And you can use willpower to do more damage. Using the exertion stat. It's all the same mechanics in the first game. Not finished. Rock. He's crazy. Um, okay. If they kill off Rock in the first scene of this game, it'll make my choice making a bit redundant. Well, we've lost this fight, surely, right? Oh. Hey, I didn't kill me in one hit. Let's go. I feel like I'm supposed to lose in this fight, right? Imagine game over. Aha! A final blow directed at your head is deflected and giant horns slam into the dread surrounding you. Ivor pulls you from your to your feet and away from the combat as other fighters from your caravan rush to finish off the enemy. Ivor moves you past a crowd of worried villagers ensuring you can stand on your own. I like that we kept Rook alive because for story purposes he was the main character of the first game. He's Ivor's like best friend or there's a, a good friendship there. I don't know what you were. I don't know what you were. He stops speaking as the village chieftain approaches. A vile leader saving a human village from those things. Legends are made of much less. No vile leader, just Ivor. 
Those things were dredged, like the stories you probably heard as a kid. And it was Rook here who ordered us to stop. Forgive me. Maybe it's this never setting sun, or dredge, or the deaths of so many of my clansmen. I'm not myself. The man's eyes appraise you, and he quickly nods. I wonder if we're going to have different main characters in this game, or if it'll stick with Rook and Hakon. I'm Aelio, the Skald. Were you trying to drive the dredge all the way back to north by yourself? I wouldn't stop there. Elio looks into your eyes for a moment before recoiling, because, you know, Rook's very angry. The loss of his daughter. Something terrible must have happened to have such hatred for them. A topic for another time, Skald, maybe. Of course, mind if I ask news of Bozgard? I heard rumours of the Sunder Bellower laying waste to the town. More than a rumour, but he's been dealt with. By... by your clan? Your Sunder Slayers? The term makes Ivor wince and ends Elio's excitement. But what about the deep shaking of the ground? Only yesterday we felt a rumble like none before. Rook's going to be a cold hide person right now. He's going to say nothing. Ivor looks at you expectantly, then sighs. All these questions, I'm being rude. Please, join us. Let us feast in your honour. Rook's going to be like, this is going to be his angst mode. His angst teenage years. No time for that. We should be going. Nonsense, you just arrived and defended us. Don't insult us by leaving before we thank you properly. I meant all of us should be going. Your people too. Not to sound ungrateful, but this place, it's all we have. It's our home. Um, nod quietly. See, Rook's going to be angsty. No, we didn't risk ourselves so the dredge could kill you tomorrow. The Skald looks around at the small huts of his village. Boasgard is the only other place I've seen in my life. This small village is all my family knows. Are things really as tragic as you're making them sound? Probably worse. Elia looks back and forth between you two and Ivor, before, well, between you and Ivor, before nodding. Packing and tending to our dead will take some time, but I'll have everyone to, on the ship soon. Elio heads off to the village to organize supplies. The world breaking, dredge mothers fighting alongside warriors, a giant serpent. Not all, not sure what to make of it all. Ivor, one of the giants known as Val, has fought dredge in the northern winters, personally killed the Sunder Rays, and lost an arm to the Sunder Bellower. He has been by your side through everything, including the death of your daughter. Now you feel the weight of his full attention. What you pulled out there, fighting the dredge alone, was that tied to a letter at all? Uh, they'll pay for taking it from me. Not much of a plan. I don't care about the Fane plan. They killed her. Bellower killed her, and we killed him. And she's still gone. I shouldn't have let her fire that arrow. Maybe that's why you charge into those dredge alone. You think you deserve to die. Only the lapping waves of the bank disturbed the silence. I felt the same way back on the bridge in Einartoft. What changed your mind? Not sure it has changed, but these people, they need a leader. They need they better be enough. That that better be enough to change yours. He walks towards the village, leaving you alone with your thoughts. Damn, Ivor, you're right. The Banner Saga 2. Chapter 8! Oh, so it does go on. From their lives, homes must all flee. The travelling merchants are surprisingly well stocked. Uh, surprisingly well stocked. Ubin, the old Val, dubbed Scrivener, says... Since Bozgard, our numbers have grown. People have scavenged for food and eaten it too. Regardless, we'll need plenty of supplies considering our destination. Thanks, Ubin. Of course, he says. Oh, almost forgot. There's something ruffling the feathers of the ravens. The mercenaries who followed us from Bozgard. Chat with their leader, Volvac. But be careful, he's not like other Val. This medallion gives you information about your caravan, including a population, supplies, renown, and the number of days that have passed. This banner indicates that you have enough supplies to provision your caravan for 28 days of resting or travel. A large population requires more supplies per day to survive. Uh, you can acquire additional supplies at this market. Select the market with L1, R1 or the left stick and press X to see who's available. I wonder if, because we've got zero fighters, we had zero fighters at the end of the first game. So I wonder if it kept those numbers based from the, from the last game. 
These supplies are the these are the supplies the merchants have available. It will give you five per renown, and you need six supplies per day to survive. This shows what you have. Your 169 supplies will last for 28 days. You have 12 renown available to purchase supplies. Press R1 to add 15 or more supplies to your caravan. The area to the left will show how these supplies affect your caravan. Now that you've added your supplies, you must confirm by pressing X. Markets also have items available. These items are uh, are equipped by your heroes and can provide a great advantage. They are they require the hero rank. The required hero rank is shown in red circles. So as we can see here, in the first game, we could go to level 5, but these items can go to level 10. Okay, cool. Do you want me to buy an item? I mean, sure, we'll buy one. Uh, willpower talents, plus 2 strength, plus 3 willpower. That's pretty decent. I can't afford that, though. I can only afford these two. More aggro, more aggro. 5% dodge. Knockback on strength. Hmm. I don't like either of these, so I won't bother. We can talk to Oddleaf, and we can talk to Balverk. I feel like we should rest first and get rid of that injury. Uh, there's no option to level up my heroes. I'd like to see who's in the team, but we can't check yet. Let's talk to uh, Oddleaf first. There was a slight hint of a romance between these two in the first game. Oddleaf, your former chieftain's widow, is demonstrating fletching an arrow to a few people as you approach. Give us a moment, will you? The group walks away as Oddleaf stands and wipes the loose feathers from her tunic. I doubt you're here to explain your actions with the dredge. I just miss a let. I can only imagine. She watches you in silence, not pressing you to continue. Eventually, she changes the subject. I wanted to discuss the clansmen. They're good at scavenging for food while we travel, but we'd always use more fighters. But training them takes time. I'm not sure how much we have of that to spare. Then you'll just have to find a balance that works. We're okay for now, but who knows how our needs will change. I see. Thanks. You turn to Oddleaf, but leave. You turn to leave, but Oddleaf places a hand on your shoulder. We should talk, Rook, at some point. Talk about what? You. Not you, the leader, but the man I knew from Skogger. She gives you a faint smile and returns to her fletching. Alrighty, let's talk to Hakon, King of the Val. Oh, weak caravan morale causes a minus one willpower penalty in battle. I did not know that. Maintain sufficient supplies and resting camp to improve morale. I wonder if that's, uh, if that was a mechanic in the first game. Maybe. The Val mercenary leader, Volberg, and a rather large female fighter are talking to Juno, a member of the spellweaving Mender's Council. Is that female fighter or Val? Because we've not seen female Vals yet. Bulwark looks annoyed. Nothing unusual. There's no haggling on this. You already accepted the offer in Beausgard. Get this one to do it. Get me to do what? If Juno is surprised by your presence, it doesn't show. She continues to stare straight at the wall. Look is seeing to the survival of this caravan. Something I doubt you care to do. Oh, no, this is the large woman. Falker. He won't be seeing to anything but longer if he keeps fighting like he did earlier. Again, what other task are you talking about? That determination will see these people safety to Arborang, but with respect, our discussion stays between us for now. Her look at Bolvok says she expects him to keep it private. Ivan needs my help with healing the wounded, but we should leave soon. See Hakon at the dock when you're ready. Juno leaves without another word. Fain, Volker. One of these days, Claw and Fang will get thirsty for Spellweaver blood. Claw and Fang? His axes. The large axe heads are polished, the blades sharp, and the cheeks scarred from plenty of use. But it's the grey handle that stands out. They're unlike anything you've seen before. How long are you going to tell Juno? To, how, how long are you going to let Juno tell you what to do? You avoid his goading. Only to Arborang. Then it's King Maynolf's job. Like he's got the answer to any of this. He'd royally piss himself if we ever saw Dredge. The pigtailed feather laughs. Fighter, sorry. Have we met? I'm Falka, a shield maiden in charge of keeping the Raidens alive. Balva gives her a stern look, but she doesn't back down. I already know who you are, Chieftain. Um, I heard there's a problem I should know about. The Val seems to grow taller and more wild as he takes a step towards you. You stopping to save every feign idiot along the river will get us all killed. Makes more sense to only stop the ships when we need supplies. And get rid of half of these useless people too, they're slowing us down. That's not going to happen. Humans, they're all the same. 
You think you have it all figured out in your short lives. You've got no faint clue what's going to happen. No more than any of us. Bulbuck snorts and turns his attention to a large sealed cart behind him. His bare cloaked back indicates the conversation is over. He's a big scary man. And I think we're done. Yep, let's leave. Or we, maybe we could rest for some more morale, but nah. The wooden planks of the well-used dock creak as you walk across them. Hakon, a warrior recently acknowledged as king of the Val, paces on the clock on the dock. Not sure I was made for this, he says as you approach. Commanding in battle is one thing, but deciding how many chickens we need to bring. Um, You seem to be handling it just fine. I'm not looking for praise, Hakon says. I just want to know that we're expecting when this is all over. And there's so few Val left, how do I keep my people alive? You search for something to say, but he stops you. I'm not looking for an answer from you either. It's something a Val king should be able to figure out that sail. Uh, let's go. Yeah. After lighting the funeral pyre, the last villagers... The last villagers find seats on your rickety long ships built of scrap wood scavenged in Beauregard. The ravens find space around the large carts on their back sailed vessel. Black sail vessel. Or slowly move all the boats into the river's current. Let's go. I wonder if the dredge will be the enemy of all three games. Or if we destroy the dredge in this game, and then the, the big serpent is the boss for the third game. Alio looks ill. At least it's not the black the blackish the brackish sea, he whispers to himself as he steps around rowers and baggage to speak with you. I'm not sure where we I'm not sure we were all built for aquatic voyages, he says, and I hear Arborang is quite a distance away. My people could use a few hours rest on solid ground. The hopeful look the hopeful look from the others sway you, and you would signal for the ships to make land. Would you mind telling me why the capital is our destination? Elio asks. Um It just is. No, it won't be that cold. Uh, it's never been breached. Ah, of course, the growing wall should certainly keep the dredge army at bay, shouldn't they? You say nothing. Dredge, Elio says, almost in awe. Man and Val's storied foe from oh so ever long ago. But they're real, and here. How have they made it this far south? His glance at the Val is met with both anger and shame. The longship rocks gently as the skull grabs a rope to steady himself. If only we had the fabled horses to ride upon. We had outpaced the dredge and we'd be on sound footing. His dramatised misery is almost as amusing as his thanks when he steps back into land. Well, we got more morale for going back to land. This is a map of the world. We can move with the right stick and zoom in with L2 and R2. The location of your caravan is indicated here by Rook's icon. The caravan recently embarked from Elio's village and is travelling westward down the Ormza River. Prior to arriving at Aelia's village, the caravan had hurriedly embarked from Boasgard in the wake of the devastating siege laid by Bellower and his armies. Prosex to learn more about it, but we don't care. This caravan is attempting to reach Ormsdala by river on the way to Arborang. Select Ormsdala and press X to learn more about it. As Storm led some of the first men east, Ormsdala was one of the most important places they settled. Nestled in the crook where Ormsa River splits, if Boasgard and Ormsdala were twins, Ormsdala would be the righteous brother trying to keep his evil twin from hurting anyone else. Okay. <laughs> Reaching Arborang, the human capital, is the ultimate goal of the caravan. It is hoped that the walls of the ancient city will provide safety against the deepening catastrophe and learn more. From humble beginnings to the eventual seat of power for the king, Arborang is the most populated and contested city throughout the human lands. Its towering obsidian walls have been pulled from the depths by the weaving power of the Menders. As each new generation of residents builds another ring of walls, well, the city continues to grow larger, but more indulgent and more dangerous. It reminds me of that city from uh, Attack on Titan. Rings of walls around and around. You can explore the map by moving the right stick. Press X for more information. Okay, thank you. Onwards. Oh, you can return to the map by pressing triangle. Triangle. Uh, cool. Yeah. As you travel through the world, time passes. The number of days is passed shown here. Each time a full day passes, your supplies will be consumed. Morale drops continuously during travel. When the supplies run low, in order to raise morale, you must make camp and allow your caravan to rest. 
The number of days worth remaining supplies is shown here. If the caravan has insufficient supplies, people will begin to starve and morale will drop. In order to maintain morale and heal injuries, you must rest in camp. Yep, we've got it. Yep. Oh, we've got to do it. Okay. When a day passes in camp, your caravan consumes a day's worth of supplies. And morale increases. Select the rest tent with L1 or R1 and press X now. Uh, I want to talk to Trigby first. Can I do that? Yeah. Trigby pulls a leaf out of your hair. The strange and oddly prophetic spearman lived near you in Skaga and has been travelling with you all along. I've lost it. Lost what? I desire to keep going. The same as you. So you're staying here? And die here? No. I just need to find it. It's my desire. I may have placed it in the sky and the sun is staying to put to hide it. That makes no sense. Trigby leans in close to you as if to whisper a secret. Does any of this really make sense? Trigby starts laughing. It's disturbing. As you walk away, you hear him singing. <laughs> Yellow and blue lie to you. Okay, goodbye Trigby. <laughs> Crazy person. Oh, my, her my herald. My heraldy. Whatever it's called. My flag. It's right there on the tent. That's cool. When a day passes in camp, your caravan consumes a day day's worth of supplies and morale increases. Select the rest tent with L1R1. Oh yeah, I've already read that. I'm such an idiot. I'm so sorry. At any time, you can visit the hero's tent to inspect and promote your heroes. Okay, this is important. Did we keep our levels from the last game? Your items are shown at the bottom. Okay. I think we kept our levels from the last game. It's hard to tell. Okay, oh wait. I, okay. Yeah, no, we did. Okay, so everyone's the same level as they were at the end of the last game. I like that. Okay, cool. You know what's crazy? Wait. Everyone's carrying the same items from the last game as well. Now that is wacky. I've only got one level. F yeah, okay. I've got all the same. This is cool. Okay, it gave us all the same stuff. And we've even got all the same people that need to promote, and I can't promote them because I've got enough renown. It's literally kept all of our progress. Nice. I wonder what it would have gave us if we didn't import our save. Cool. We can't afford to uh, upgrade anyone. We haven't got enough renown. Let's uh, let's continue on. So it's almost like nothing ever happened. We've just continued the game straight from the last episode. You shout order, uh, shouted orders turned several ships towards the bank. You have no choice but to call the other vessels to halt as well. By the time you land, a crowd is gathered by the water. Ooh, it's going to be refugees wanting to join us or something. Or bandits, who knows. Uh, a man in fine clothes and missing a hand stands in the centre of the others. He smirks as you approach. And here he is, the famed self-proclaimed ruler of us all. Rugger. Are you the reason for this delay? I don't answer questions from backwater scum. No matter how high they've risen in the pond. Then I'll stop asking. Get back on the boats. You don't know who you're talking to, do you? Uh, Rook, you might not remember when we first arrived in Boasgard. But I went with Bolvark to speak with the governor. What's your point? Well, this is Rugger, the governor. Ludin, the entitled Prince of Arborang, who joined you in Einartov, steps forward from the gathering crowd. The former governor of what was Boasgard, actually? Careful, Prince. Rivers are dangerous, especially this far from your papa's side. The threat causes a few gasps from the clansmen. Ludin's bodyguard, the usually quiet Val Bercy, growls, but is waved off by the young prince. The Mender and I were just discussing Rook's banner. It'll make a nice addition to Boa's guards. That's not going to happen. I don't respect this man. These aren't the rules of the woods anymore, Rook. You're among young. You're among men now. Try to act like one. If anything, Rook's banner would join Arborangs. Or are you claiming control of the entire kingdom too? I'm just trying to guide my vulnerable prince home with some dignity and proper leadership. But it was Rook who led the fight against Bellower, while you hid in your great hall, Governor. Overseeing a besieged town isn't hiding, Mender, just as fighting in a battle isn't necessarily leading. But Rook kept us alive across the frozen wastes, he did, cries a man. Saved us tonight, our top too, a woman adds. Others join in, listing your deeds and cheering your name. Then it's settled. No more delays. Rook is our official guide to Arborang, but will consult with me on major decisions. I'd really like to know what happens if I was a let right now, but they, they wouldn't respect me as much, right? Everyone, just get back on the boats. Yes, return to the ships. The helmeted guard next to Rugger makes a gesture for only the governor to see. Rugger laughs as the crowd disperses. Prince, your guide has a lot to learn before Arborang. 
shut up, Rugger. So is he? He didn't join us, right? No, they've left. We'll see him again, I'm sure. Ahead, driftwood has collected. Clever, creating an impressive barrier for the longships. Alternatively, going ashore has its own risks for whatever might be lurking in the trees. Um, Rohard will break through. I don't like that. Prefer for portage will carry the ships around. Break the ships. Now nah, we'll carry him round. The ships groan as they are hoisted onto the shoulders and marched and marched across the land. Navigating through the riverside brush takes time, but everyone pulls through unscathed. As the ships push off once again, dredge appear on the bank, a silent reminder of their constant threat. Nest we got some supplies there, love that. Oh, I lost some morale though. Uh, the Axemen and the Val pull away from their task to join the fight. Several die in the extended battle as blunted axes fail to kill swiftly. Eventually the dredge retreat and the river island is cleared. The river is cleared. So I'd actually like to have got into a proper fight there, but oh well. We might make it down this river to the capital without any more trouble. You look at Ivor, surprised by his optimism. And I might sprout wings and start flying. Would that make up for your missing arm? Hey, I gotta make jokes about losing my arm, not you. <laughs> I suppose that's fair. So what are you worried about now? I think you should make use of this trainer and his tent that we hauled around everywhere. What trainer? You've led fighters in battle before, but there's always more to learn. So let's bank up ships and challenge your skills a bit. I'm down. Oh, wait. This is your training tent where you can hone your skills by completing challenges. That wasn't in the first game, was it? I never touched the training tent in the first game. Because I thought it was just... Uh, that's how you learn your guys' abilities and stuff, which I didn't really care to do. We'll talk to Ivan first. You watch for a moment as Ivan, Juno's apprentice, and the men as found nearby, nearly dead at Ridgehorn, moves his staff in a complex pattern, repairing some armour. Not a bad festival trick, right? I've seen worse. And I've seen better, like yours back in Boa's guard while st with stopping Bellower. Um, for all the good it did. Ivan watches you, studying your face before speaking. I know the pain in your eyes. Remember when we left Sigurd home? I just knew if we could wait one more day... Juno would arrive. And you were wrong. Like you are now. You saved hundreds of lives, each one grateful for your leadership. And all it cost me was my daughter. I'd give anything to have her back. Ivan's face falls. You don't know how dangerous that thinking can be. I'll say nothing. The Ender looks lost in distant memories. His face contorts with pain, sadness, and frightening, frightening violence. Ivan, are you okay? He glares at you, raising his staff before recognising his surroundings and growing embarrassed. Sorry, I was... It's not important. Just be careful making sacrifices. Of course. None of us knows what's coming. The people here are the only ones we know we can save right now. And that's that... It's that simple. Ivan picks up the repaired armour, hitting it with his staff to test it. I'm glad we could talk, but I need to check on the fighter who was wearing this. I mean, we've got to try it. We've got to try, right? I want to see the challenges. Well, come on in and let's have a look at you, Sven, the trainer says. Um. Oh. After a quick assessment, he says, Yep, looks like you could stand to learn a few things. I've got five challenges for you, and if you can finish them all before we go to Arborang, well, I'll let everyone know you've impressed me. Ha! Sven's laughter is full of phlegm. Ha! Let's start with a few of the basics. You think about what he's saying. You feel up to the challenge? Well, I don't have an option. Then we begin. Sven barks. Use options to open the options menu and select battle objectives to get detailed instructions about the objectives. Form a shield wall. I know how to do that. Use heavy impact to damage enemies three times. Okay, I don't really know that. Position your raider adjacent to an ally, I get that. If your archer is stationary and the enemy's armour is damaged, kill him. I don't get that. When Hakon or any Val warrior attacks a target, all enemies adjacent to the target also take damage. Okay. Shield wall done.
Got a damage armor. I'm not going to kill anyone. I can kill that guy, but it's not going to help me. Oh, close to being able to kill him. Um... I think we're all set up. So this should work, I think. I attack this guy in the middle and it attacks everyone around. Nice, it worked. And now... Kill this guy. So that, that's why the number's in green. Because it's puncture damage, right? I think that's what it means. Nice. We didn't need to kill everyone. It's just complete the challenges. What do we get for that? Renown, perhaps? That would be nice. Nice. I wonder if we can still get uh, injured in sparring. Let's have a look at you. I've got to wait a little second. Very misleading, so I thought the game crashed last time this happened. And then press X. No, still got to wait. Press down. No, just just wait. He's looking at me. He's still looking at me. Just want to, just wanted to swing each other. Swing us or um. What can you show me? Plenty. Sven says, walking into the large tent. Try to keep up. I would like to see, if it's possible at all, if there's any more challenges. Knowing how not to hurt yourself, children can do that. Sven says, show me how you can actively mark prey. Think about what he's saying. I'm ready. Then begin. I hope it's another challenge. We could we could pile up some renown here. I hope it's not just a spa. Okay. Now we know what Mark Prey does. If anyone else is in range of the enemy, everyone will attack. Um not really much point in moving anyone. The archers should definitely get closer. You're fine there. Put Rook out of the way. Big Varman there. Yeah, this is all good. And let's go. Probably should have been my spear guy. I didn't realise I hadn't. I just realised... To have four people attack the same enemy, I think my archers need to be involved. Well, I don't need to, but it's going to be tough. Technically could be done here. Hmm. 
Oh! No, it still doesn't work. Yeah, I messed up. I could have done this in the first turn if I just got my archers involved. I think, I think, ah, oh, I would have had it if this guy didn't just block my avenue. Oh, I messed this up. Well, now it's... Can I restart? I messed up. I could have done it all in the first turn. And now people are dying. It's practically impossible. Can we try again, though? Wait, hold on. Oh, I hate the pausing. Why does it take so long? Is it loading? Or is it... Do I have to wait the same amount of time every time? Man... Oh, I don't want to spot! For God's sake! Oh, man, alive. Back out, back out, back out. No, I don't want to quit the game. God damn it. Oh, are you serious? I can't... Ready. Ready the battle. I don't care. God damn it. Bloody hell. That is the... The most infuriating thing I've ever seen. I've got to wait a year for this guy to say, come on in and let's have a look at you. And I can't spam X because it'll make me automatically spa. Oh, you know, this is such a long-winded thing that I think what we'll do is like one challenge every time we stop for camp. And we'll never do more than one at a time. We will have one more attempt at this. But I'm not going to waste too much time trying. Five for six. There we go. Uh, what can you show me? What can you sh What can you show me? I'm ready. Okay. Now I've got to remember how many turns we get first. So if I put my two archers in range of attacking the Val, then I put you over here to attack the Val from the side. Spearman there. No, we should go there. Other raider there. Okay. Whoops. I was supposed to attack his armor there, but it worked. Oh, I don't like him blocking the way. So that's two. My two archers is two. Now that's three. Oh my god, how do they perfectly know how to block my guys? This is so sad. It's like they know what I'm trying to do and they know exactly how to block me from doing it. Damn it. In fact, no, this is good. This is perfect. Yeah. 
So now my spearman can reach, my shield guy can reach, my Vile can reach, my two archers can reach. I think we've done it. Okay. Luckily, he moved right where I wanted him to. Get wrecked. Nice. For a second, I thought we messed it all up. Success! Give me that extra renown. Oh my gosh, 14. It was worth it. Oh, you know what? I kind of want to do it again. But we can't. We can, however, level up our heroes. Um, start with our lowest levels. Odd leaf. Continue. Wait, did that cost 7 renown? Oh. Okay. It's cheaper than it was in the last game. Um, yeah, I know press X to learn about abilities. Oh, there it is, Puncture. For every two points of armor her target has lost, the archer gains one additional strength to her attacks. As long as she didn't move beforehand. Wow. We could learn a strength ability. You know what? No, no. 15% isn't, isn't high enough for me. We'll go one more exertion. 10% to cause puncture. Or with any attack? No. What about exertion? Avoid strength attacks or... Or bonus hit chance. What does that mean by bonus hit? I don't know. Wait, what? You know what? Let's go for it. What does it mean by bonus hit? A second hit? Or does it mean... You know, the chance to land a hit. Who knows? We'll take it. And uh, now let's level up another level 3. Alio. I don't know much about this guy yet. He's a poet. Uh, we'll give him 2 on break. Okay, next level 3. E-kill. Can't get promoted. But he does have 4 points available. So let's put one there. One there, one there, and one on armor. Then we got Mogun, one of my personal favorites. Yep, let's upgrade this guy. Bonus crit chance. I do like it. I do like it. But we'll go two on armor. Cool. Mogear. Nope, you're level four. Keep going through the level threes. Bursi. And we'll go. Go full strength. Be a bit of a. Of a berserker. Krumir. Oh, we've got no more renown. But that's good. That's a good amount of progress. Alright, finally, let's leave. This might be one of the longer episodes, just because of all that training. Clansman's forage plus one. What does that mean? Supplies? You look at all the food freshly placed in the supply carts. What's this all about, you ask Godleaf? The clansmen are trying to help as much as possible now, she says. Whenever they can, they'll forage for nuts and berries, or fish and hunt. She hands you a piece of fruit. They might not know how to fight, but they can keep us alive by keeping us fed. Ah, epic. We do need fighters though, we are going to die without fighters. Shouts from one of the rear longships grabs everyone's attention. The quicker construction, provably faulty, and the ship's taking on water fast. With dredge on the bank, of all the other ships almost at capacity, you consider your options. Bank for repairs and fight dredge. Have the clansmen board the ships, where we are almost full. Dump supplies and make room on other longships. Um. Let's do repairs. I don't mind doing a fight. Ropes are thrown to, the to those overboard the sinking longship, but it's hauled towards the bank. A few dredge appear, but keep their distance. Their glowing eyes and strange hums unnerve the caravan, as workers make necessary repairs. Nice. So no one got attacked. I presume I can see a camp further up the river. 
Time on the cramped long ships is proving too much for the children. They're climbing ropes, interrupting rowers, and constantly leaning over the sides to touch the water. Some vile and clansmen look annoyed. Keep your kids by your side, we're at war until Arborain. Some mothers give you irritated glances while a few vile smile in your direction. Regardless, there is no denying children are safer at their parents' side. No morale lost there, we love that. We lost morale there because an extra day has passed, but that's fine. I think we're going to go with the Season 1 approach. Or season 2, Episode 1 approach. A desperate looking lot of adults and Val stand on the shoreline, waving you down. You probably look similar going anywhere with either. They look hungry, but can they be trusted? Toss supplies them as you pass, but don't stop. God. Yeah, we'll do that. We've got spare supplies, we don't have spare room. Your clansmen are glad to share some supplies. A few on the shore beg to join you, but they quickly fall silent, gratefully filling their mouths with food. The Val remains both motionless and expressionless, quietly watching as you pass. We'll take that. We'll take that. I feel like that was the best option. Now what is this in the middle of the river? Oh. Smoke from a village catches everyone's attention, and the longships begin to slow. I doubt these scraps of wood were floating and can hold in many more, Ivor says, but you feel the governor's gaze on you as he slowly shakes his head. Ooh. Do you want me to turn my back on them? It's not that, Ivor says. It's just not that if you... It's that if you try for too much, sometimes you're worse off than trying at all. Hmm. We'll help as many as we can. When the ships land, you and a few others rush towards the smoke, but the closer you get, the stranger the situation. There's no snow sounds of battle or people panicking or putting out fires. Keep going, Velvet growls. We'll see what the dead are carrying. The Vals commit to fire tradition. But, do, but so do many things about him. Yeah, sure. A barn is usually the only thing burning. The barn is the only thing burning. No one is around. Unusual, Oddly says. Some kind of trick? It definitely is. Get back to the ships. You arrive to see a group of armed strangers throwing your people from a ship full of supplies and pushing away from the bank. From behind an arrow riddled shield, their leader nods to you. This guy. You help pull people from the water and find places on the remaining crowded ships. Governor Rugger silently stares at you. Oh, so is the governor with us or not? Oh, our morale is low. A large clump of hazelnut trees looks like a good place for clansmen to stretch their legs and gather supplies. Once in land, the children laugh while kicking around leather-wrapped balls of rags. You notice a Val on the edge of the clearing, silently staring into the woods. He's watching a lone dredge grunt talk to a squirrel. Stalker squirrel, sorry. Might be a hundred of them in these woods. A Val's whisper, still too loud enough to scare the squirrel and alert the grunt. It looks at you in the Val before slowly backing up. Hmm... Kill it before it alerts more. Get the caravan back on the ships. Back away. Well, back away. You hold your hands up and back away too. The Val follows your lead and the dredge cocks its head, watching. It then turns and runs. The caravan later discusses what it could mean, but all seems too overjoyed by the amount of nuts they collected to worry. Wow, that's a lot of, that's a lot of supplies. Carved rock on a vacant island. Asilai's godstone almost looks lonely. Chill, welcome to the stream, and Shura, welcome to the stream. And thank you, Shura. That means a lot. She's even more beautiful than the songs say. We've still not had a, a fight in this game yet, which is a bit weird. Apart from the training fights. And the tutorial fight. Oh. The statue is glowing. Am I supposed to press anything? Let's press X. Nope. Oh, I can. Oh, goddammit. 
The clansmen and Vala are admiring the godstone when you notice some are missing. It's Bulbuck and his ravens, Alio says. They looked rather upset by my music and all the singing. He shrugs. If they'd rather hang around that large cart instead of joining us, I won't take it personally. But come closer. Let me introduce you to Azalai, the god of streaming waters. She is the curves of every river. A guide for those of travelling unfamiliar lands. The skull runs a finger over a small etching in the stone. Inscriptions from all those who were lost and found a way back home with her help. Pay your respects and leave. You say a silent prayer to the long dead god and return to the pitched camp. Amid the chaos of the clansmen stretching and drinking, a woman in torn robes slips out of your tent. You lose sight of her, but nothing seems amiss in your tent, so you let it go. Azalai Renown plus five. The number of our fighters and clansmen is shown there. If your caravan is assaulted en masse in a war situation, it is the fighters that protect the clansmen while your heroes fight a tactical battle. It is important to keep enough trained fighters available, but keep in mind that fighters consume more supplies than clansmen, but are less effective at foraging. Okay, this is new. Speak to Sven in the training tent to start training some of your clansmen into battle-ready fighters. Ooh, that's huge. We need that. Okay. So we'll talk to Hakon first. The two Val look deep in conversation, but Iva catches your eye and waves you over. So they've all armed themselves and are running from something, but what? Hakon's becoming a dredged scholar, trying to understand the motivations of our enemy. It's just strange that we've never seen their women fight until recently. Good thing, too, we might have lost the Great Wars. You think about what to say. Has anyone ever talked to a dredge? Both of all look at each other. There are rumours that some have tried and been killed in the process. A lot of nonsense. Skull tales about the sound of the dredge's voice making your skin fall off. So there's been no communication with the enemy. Is that normal? We're too busy killing to worry about a fireside chat. Besides, they only ever make warbling sounds. I'd guess if anyone had talked to them, it'd be the Valka. But good luck getting them to give you a straight answer. Um, Juno says that the darkness coming. But what Valkas say and mean aren't always the same. They speak in riddles and prophecy. Still, it might explain why the dredge are everywhere. So like someone kicked an anthill. Maybe whatever's coming hit them first. Or maybe it's just a new tactic for a new war. If they've learned to crack the ground and call a giant serpent, then we're all dead and just don't know it yet. I don't think the serpent is on the dredge's team. I'll leave you two figuring out the big issues. You should know the clansmen have been talking about killing women and children. Dredge or not. Ooh. It's not sitting well with everyone, which is probably the way it should be. I say if it's us or them, we'll make sure we're still standing. I'm bothered more by your decision to destroy Arnatop's bridge. Let it go, Hakon. It was the best decision at the time. To collapse a bridge that cost thousands of bald lives, the vile lives to build. If it weren't your damn horns, Ingvar, I'd swear you were an overgrown human. The two giants begin trading insults and you step away, letting them vent. Okay. Uh, let's do another training. Oh, yep. Yeah, they're telling me the same thing about... Yep. Yeah. Let's have a look at you. Okay, the trainer looks past you and some boys and girls eager to learn. Teaching fighters to the young. Teaching fighters to the young, Sven muses. They won't go back to hunting and foraging for food, you know. Sure that's what you want to go through? Well, we need the protection, yeah. Ooh. Sven blows out all his air through his flapping lips. Then let's get it done. How many do you want fighting for you? 200, 100, or 50? I feel like we should go 100, right, right in the middle. Nice and safe. We've got enough food and water to last us a day and a half, Sven asks. That's what it'll take for me to break them from running with the first sign of trouble. Make it happen. Consider it done, Sven whistles through his missing teeth. Consider it done. Good caravan morale causes a plus one willpower bonus in battle. Yeah. Some of our units are already to be promoted or improved. Uh, we haven't really got a lot of renown, though. Let's see if we can do another challenge. Ah, okay, there's no more waiting. What can you show me? Plenty. Let the last lesson soak in a while longer, okay? We don't want to train any more clansmen yet. We can't turn any of the Vols into fighters, which is a shame. Um, we've got enough Renown to promote. It only costs seven, so we can promote two more. Let's do Krumir, or Krumer. Oh yes, he's my brute. Resist. Oh no. 
we've got resist damage or bonus crit chance. Yeah, let's do that. I want him to be the biggest beastie, beefiest beastie beef that you've ever seen. And we can have a look one more. Hack on. What is that? What is that man? What's that man symbol? Titans. Oh, we've already got Titan straps. Okay, regen armor every turn. That's pretty good. Oh, a 20% chance. So once every five turns on average. Oh, do I pick an ability and I'm stuck with it? Okay. I didn't know that. Let's get armor break. So if I go on this, I get exploit or divert. And that's it. And we'll do strength. Lovely. Justin, welcome to the stream. And let's move on. Yeah. We're an hour into our first stream and we still haven't had a single fight. Apart from the tutorial and the training in the camp. A crowd begins to cheer from one of the long ships as the man struggles with his fishing net. As his catch nears the surface, some more some voice concerns. You're close enough to make this large ship and what looks like fur or hair on the net. Wait, what? Oh, one of the long ships. Okay, so someone on one of our ships is struggling with his fishing net. You're close enough to make out a large shape and what looks like fur or hair. Keep watching. A bear cub, shouts the man with the net. Long dead. What's it mean? Superstitions blow across the ships like a gale. Talks of plagues and fanning make eyes go wide. You notice bulwark at the bow of the ship, staring at the cub and brooding more than usual. So someone caught a bear cub in the water. A cool breeze crosses the water. A, a, a cool breeze across the water works its way into your cloak. You shift to block the wind and feel something press onto your hip. You feel around and find an item in your pack, but do not remember obtaining it. Okay, sure. We'll take it. And away we go. Into the next area, perhaps. The sheer cliffs and boulder-strewn waters of the southern bank dictate the longship's course. The droning sounds of the dredge accent their quicker pace as they follow your ships along the northern bank. Dust and mist make it hard to see ahead. A hissing, rumbling noise grows all around. Waterfall! shouts the sharp-eyed mid from the bow of her longship. Oars instantly reverse, and you immediately lose your balance. Oh! Well, that's not good. Oh my god, don't end it. Don't end the chapter there. Surely not. Okay, thank god. What do we do? The roar of the approaching waterfall clouds your thoughts. The ships struggle, but their light weight makes them able to pull away from the rivers. Able, okay, so we are able to get away from the current. The thought of what more clansmen weighing down the ships would have done makes you shiver. Oh, so if we had took more people on, we would all be dead. The remaining ships ro show rowers pull hard. Heading for the dredge line northern bank in their haste, the vessels smash against the sharp split rock as they push towards the shore. Some fighters are thrown from the boats, sinking in mud under the weight of their armour. Damn it, I had too many fighters. The long ships are too spread out to command a unified landing. Amid the chaos, you look at those nearby. Gris, a stout Val warrior, and a few others make him look ready to rush the dredge. Olbark and his company are close to you, hauling their sealed carts off the ship. You consider your options. Um, I want to tell Bolver, but I feel like he'll say no and make it a waste of my time. Let's go with arrows. I'll do what I can, she says, grabbing a couple more quivers. I'll leave nimbly climb some rocks for a vantage point. Using the cover, she begins pinning down Dredge. Our first fight! Now, I feel like, um... Oh, Oddleaf can't be used in this fight. Okay. Now, as always, we do want to use our weakest guys to make sure everyone's at the same level. So, Ludin and Shrigvi, and E-Kill, and Nid are all going to be part of this fight. And we get one bonus choice, 
And I think we should go with... Hmm. Let's go with Krumer. And in terms of order, get the archers at the back. And... That should do. Ah, I'm ready. That's a lot of dredge. I'll cover you from here, but don't expect any miracles. Okay, so we can see where Eldleaf's arrows are going to land. I do feel like we should all get on one side. Now, there's a lot of dredge, but only five are in the fight. Three on the left, two on the right. I feel like we should go for the two on the right. So, let's get everyone on this side. E-kill, let's move you out of the way. So, Kruma can get at the front. Spearman. I feel like my archers should actually be close. Oh, that'll do. Now I can get him right involved. Let's do it. We'll take that. Um, we're not going to waste willpower yet moving. We don't need to. We couldn't reach him anyway. Watch your flank. Something skulks from the shadows. What the hell is that? Surely they're enemies of both of us. They're going to fight the dredge as well, right? Now, Trigby can reach. But do we want to waste 2 AP? No. We'll just move here. Well, what a waste of an arrow. Didn't hurt anyone. And the animal... Don't really know what they're doing. What does Guts do? Knock back to all enemies around him. I still can't tell whose team they're on. Could kill him. I don't see the point in killing him because... Nib can do it next turn. More of those skulkers. Damn. Oh wow, they are coming in. But are they going to fight the dredge? Ten damage. Ew. Please don't block it. Nice. Oh my word. Okay, another new enemy. Kill that one, it might make the others run. Kill that one that's really far away, you mean? That I can't reach. I'm a bit worried for Krumer, he's very weak now. I think it's a good time for Ludin to get involved. Okay, she still hasn't hit anyone. Um, go there to make some space for E-Kill to run through. Nice, that'll make the big strong guy a lot weaker. Now, will they attack? No, they appear to be on the same team. That should make this guy a bit too weak to kill anyone. Doesn't matter to be fair, because he's dead. I 
still hasn't landed an arrow on anyone. They're not very strong, but... Okay, I don't want to get attacked here, so we need to be careful. So like there, that should be far enough. Sorry, hello. Oh, he's gone. Where'd he go? No one else can attack too far away, so let's just get a uh, good position. Yay! I feel like this is a stupid idea. Are you about to trick me directly in harm's way for that stronger looking guy to get involved? I guess if I butt E kill next to him, they'll get the shield wall. Nice. So I thought she just shot at that place at the end of the turn. But no, it pins people down. Stops them in their tracks, which is very handy. Oh no. We'll take that. We will take that. Oh my god, it was there the whole time. It was just invisible. And I can't hit it. What do you, I don't know. I, I, I know where it is. What do you mean I can't hit it? We know he's right there. Okay, we still... Okay, he's back. Okay. Phew, I guess. Trigby's not going to hurt anyone anytime soon. I'm not going to waste all his willpower moving. I mean, I can't do much else. We might as well just get the kill on that little animal. For the extra renown. Nice. He gets stunned by the arrow. Now I could do the move that helps my teammates attack, but is there much point? Again, extra renown. My horn is full and it won't fill anymore, so I might as well use it. But it only goes up when I kill someone. Krumia <laughs> can't do much, but we'll send him in there. Oh, he killed now. Trigby's down. Some things never change. I think Mark Prey will work here pretty well. Wow, it worked really well. I didn't realise that everyone in my team was in range to attack. Good job, team. That was uh, scary. Hakon works his way through the frantic clansmen on his way to you. You made some tough calls on that river. If those ships had been loaded down with more people, no telling how many we would have lost. Thanks. Too bad the landing was so rough. Hakon squints into the distance. Their next attack is coming, and this time they'll come in force. What do they want? 
Then this is it. No, no, no. They've led. Uh, I've led everyone to a dead end. Any chance of fighting through them? Uh, well, we got, we got to ask the question. No, not even before the losses we just took. The best we can do is become a wall, so they get tired of punching. Juno and Ivan approach. There may be a way out of this situation. A gamble to be sure, but we believe it's our only chance. Gods, it's bad when a Volker option is the only option. Worse than I... I can't promise everyone will make it. Juno gives Ivan a look. Just tell me your plan. Ivan sighs. With Juno's help, I think we can get across the chasm, but it won't be easy. For me, or the caravan. I need to help Ivan and calm these people so they're ready to march when he's ready. You need to keep this area clear of Dredge at all costs if they... The sound of a war horn cuts her off, and everyone turns to look. The Dredge assault begins. Rook, Icon, you know what to do. It looks like the force you train is roughly the size of the enemies. This could go either way, but a victory here will protect most of your clansmen. So if I had more fighters, we would be in a good situation. <laughs> Yikes. Juno and Ivan move up to the cliff's edge. Hakon, surveying the battlefield, says some supply barrels could make a few barricades or for defence. Otherwise, it will be a straightforward assault. Uh, so yeah, sacrifice some supplies. Men and Val begin moving barrels full of food and gear ahead of the fighters. They look your way for confirmation. You realise their supplies will be ruined in the fight. Uh, yeah, do it. The barrels are ready, rolled into place before the fighting begins. That'll help, right? Uh, yeah, we have injuries, we already know that. So we'll actually take these injured guys out. And I still want to get our weakest guys in, but the weakest guys are injured, so we have a choice from anyone. I like Oddleaf. But I don't want to have three archers, so we'll remove Rook. And then we'll bring in Ivor and Mogan. And, yep, I'm happy with the turn order. Let's go. Okay. Hold them off, this will take time. So I think the only goal here is to keep them at bay. Um, got to be careful because I've also got big units that might get trapped here. Sounds good to me. Okay. Now I don't want to do too much here. We don't want to block up our big guys. Didn't attack the barrel. Um, I'm almost tempted to just wait and get the willpower, but... Very nice. I feel like maybe attacking on this side will be better. I guess it doesn't really matter, right? Ned, what can we do? More armor damage. Ah, good. Just what I wanted to see. You must keep the dredge away. Okay, that's good. Didn't hurt the barrels. Amazing. Wow. 
Concentrate, Ivan. You're not doing it. Surely Juno could do this even easier. Six damage. It's gonna make that guy a lot weaker. Oh god. Um. Hmm. Yeah, I've got to move you here, otherwise I'm blocking my archer off. Great. Did double damage when I didn't need to, but nice. Get here, ready for the flank. I mean, we're smashing it so far. I'm presuming we have to wait for one more, right? We still need more time. The old grand rule of three. So I'll do a massive armor attack. Um, yeah, let's do a normal attack. Yeah, might as well just attack this guy. I wish I could do 11 damage, but I can't. But now he's too weak to really hurt anyone. Krumia, easy kill for you. Little bit worried for our boy there. Miss it? Are we done? That should work. If we can clear the, uh, if we can clear away the dredge, we can proceed. Oh, the fight's not over. That's not a good sign. Ah, oh, epic kill. All that does is hurt your friends. Nice armor buff for everyone around. Big strong guy is no longer strong. Still pretty big though. No point in wasting Ivor's big strong attack on the guy who's really weak. Ha! Pathetic. I want to keep Ivor, oh no, uh, Krumia back a little bit. Might be throwing away Ludin's life. Not quite yet, okay. If this lands, it'll kill. Ah, oh. But actually amazing, because... This guy who's still alive is blocking off the big guy. Just a normal attack. Don't need to waste any. I mean, we could waste willpower, we've got a full horn. Get out of here. Again, that only hurts your friends.
Ah. I know you need to break armor, but it would have killed. Um. We might as well attack. Oh wait, sorry. Forgot who I was controlling there. I can kill the big guy, but only 20% chance to land. 30% against him. Impale my kill? Nice. We're doing so well, but unfortunately, we are going to get one injury, and it's going to happen right here. That is a shame. We were doing really well. I don't see us losing anyone else. Trap on the floor. Still hurts us even next to it, so. Nice. Uh, you won't be able to reach. Neither will you. It's all you, Morgan. One injury? We'll take that. Oh, we lost a fair few people, though. Sorry, Ludin. He actually sucks. <laughs> My spearmen always get hurt the most, which is weird because they've got range. They're more rangy than any other melee guy. Juno walks into the floating land, cradled a kid goat. Cradling a kid goat in one arm. She looks strained, but beckons to the families to follow. You shout for everyone to start moving, but the fighters and clansmen alike remain motionless. Large chunks of earth bobbing in midair like ships at sea has everyone unsettled. Finally, Ivor takes the reins of a yuck loaded with supply carts and walks onto the first floating stone. It supports the load without issue. We go this way on the dredge colour at all. Its words are punctuated by slinger stones thudding into the ground only feet away. Men pick up their children and start running. The caravan animals squawk and bleat in a frenzy. Val push through the crowd while others might fight to follow in their wake. The frightened mob tramples a few of the tramples a few and knocks a couple more from the ledge before everyone is strangely pacified. Even you feel a sense of calm settle your nerves. Now this is pretty cool. The wounded and elderly struggle to make it onto the floating rocks while fear of the dredge paralyzes the legs of others. The dredge gives chase, crossing under the bridge without hesitation. Um, drop the back of the bridge. It's not easy to mouth the words, but there are just too many dredge, while Ivan seems unresponsive. Juno nods to you. Yikes. You watch as the floating stones nearest the lands tremble and drops back to the chasm, taking all standing there with them. The sight is terrifying, as you turn to urge the others to keep moving forward. Oh god, I didn't want to see their little bodies falling from the sky. Jeez. This is pretty cool. I don't know where we're travelling to, but we're just seamlessly flying at this point. Ivan is growing visibly weaker. Meanwhile, many in the caravan are stunned by witnessing family members fall to their deaths. The effect is spreading. Rip a weaving man away from the falling edge. Run to the back and push people forward. 
Your footing is precarious as you reach the collapsing rear of the bridge. You physically push men, women and children forward. Others follow your lead. It doesn't keep everyone from falling, but it helps. Damn. The stones behind the caravan are falling faster than the ones rising in the front. The rear clansmen are pushing forward in a panic. Bulbuck shouts, knock some of these people over the edge before we all go down. People gasp and flee from him. We are carrying too much, Ivor says. We've got to get rid of something before the mender drops us all into the depths. We look around to see only people, food and the massive cart the ravens are hauling. Only two of those are an option. Dump the food. I'm too curious to see what's in that cart that Bulbuck's got. The ones closest to the supplies look at you, bewildered. We won't need food if we don't make it across, you shout. Slowly, a couple of the carts are unhitched and shoved over the edge. Ivan's relief is almost instant, and the bridge extends, giving everyone more room to time to move. Oh, we're going uphill now. Oh, I see the end! Oh, Mr. Just a bit farther, Ivan. Oh, the serpent. The serpent's here. I can feel it. No? Okay. Ivan's scream chills you as it echoes off the cliff a hundred yards away. Again, the bridge shakes but stays together. When Juno looks at you, her lips are trembling. This is killing him, she says, and I won't let that happen. Her tone is dark and cold. What, what's the alternative? She says nothing but looks towards the rear of the caravan. Governor Ruga and many others from Boasgard are back there. The food. We'll get rid of the rest of it. Thank you. We'll replace them in Ormsdala, says Juno before turning, returning to the Ivan side. The supplies are dumped and the caravan moves forward. I don't get why Ivan can do this, but Juno can't. We made it. Damn, we lost a, a fair few boys. Our army is practically all vile now. Watch your step. It's hard to believe we made it across that chasm. Now we find what's left of Ormstaller. Once a great trade town at the fork of the Ormsa River. How many lives must have been lost here? Looks like a few buildings might have made it. Whatever caused that chasm completely destroyed this place. It was the serpent, I'm telling you. So we can't replace our supplies here. <laughs> from the massive vial to the youngest human children, everyone is sapped from crossing the chasm. Tents are loosely strung up and gear is thrown on the ground as everyone falls asleep. You manage to post a few guards out of habit before striking, sinking down against the crate, wrapping your cloak around you and closing your eyes. Your chest aches as if from a wasp, piece, or a wasp sting. Feeling around for the cause of it, you look down between your leathery grey fingers, running over a red stone breastplate. Gasping, you open your eyes to find your cloak still wrapped around you, no stone armour underneath. The caravan is still asleep, snoring more prevalent than usual. You're able to drift off for a bit more rest before facing the tasks of the new day. Jeez. At least we can rest. Yep, the Red Skull means people are injured, I know this. Oh, we've still got some supplies, that's good. Not too bad. Now, there's no training here, which is, you know, understandable. We can do some hero upgrades. Start with E-Kill. Can't get upgraded. Um, who else we got? Ludin. Um, he dies a lot, so I feel like armor is a must. 
Uh, we got Nid. Make her better at breaking armor and some more strength. And I believe we have one more level three. Trigvi. We've got Ekel as well, but he can't get upgraded. Dodge. Dodge isn't bad, but 5% is so small. I like 10% chance. Let's just go... Yeah, full strength. Okay, how much does it take to upgrade 9 points? So I can promote 1 level 4 into level 5. Uh, is that a controller wrapped to a sword? What is that item? A playful hilt of Arnia. The hilt of a sword was said to provide comfort in extended battles. Huh. We've got loads of items here now. Let's go for... Who do I like the most? Let's go for a rook. Actually, no. Let's go for someone who hasn't got an item, so they can equip a new one. Um, yeah, either. Whoops, I didn't mean to remove him. Get back over there. And we'll put one on strength and one on armor. And we will give him an item. Now, these are the four items we've got for level fives. Knock back on strength and plus one strength. 20% crit chance. One strength, one armor, one willpower, one break. But plus one aggro. Two willpower and two strength. <sighs> hmm. I like this one. I don't think plus one aggro... I don't even know what plus one aggro means, really. Um, basically, what do I prefer? One armor and one strength, or two strength. But this gives you one break as well. We have to go for that. Okay, cool. Uh, let's go check out these ruins, I guess. Got no option to yeah, no option to do anything else. You make your way across the broken bones of the former trade town, curious as to what's inside this building, which is somewhat still intact. The structure groans as you enter and you hear yourself whispering, This isn't worth it. After a quick survey of the room, only two things stand out a stone with the strange etchings resting on the broken mantle, and footprints of the dust near a small door in the wall. A gust of wind blows up from the chasm and the whole building creaks back out. You decide not to test your luck and leave the building empty handed. As you make your way back across the rubble towards the caravan, you hear part of the structure give way and plume of dust rises behind you. I made the right choice there, I reckon. Ivor stands stoically by Ivan's pallet, watching the menders breathing. It took a lot out of him. Out of everyone. No doubt, a lot of families lost members out there. So why even follow me? I get people killed. I'm not doing this again. If you can't see the number of people out there still alive because of you, nothing I say will change it. With nothing to say, you look down at the resting mender. The spell weaving took a toll on him. He looks as bad as me. Before Ivor can respond, Oddleaf abruptly ent enters the room. Good, you're here. It's the Ravens. They're trying to leave and some of your people want to go with them. Let them. It's their choice. I know, but they've been hoarding supplies this whole time and they're trying to take off with them. Juno and Hakon are trying to talk sense into Bulwark, so it's desperate. As you make your way to the door, you turn to look at Ivor. Another Vile isn't going to help that situation. I'll stay here with the mender. Oh crap! Now stand down, or you'll be missing more than your horns. Stand down, you son of a god! Wow. Is it going to be a fight, or it is? I can't calm him. His fury. Yeah, they are, just as I said. Oh my god, no way. I was going to say, he's not going to kill the king, is he? Barbuck's lost his mind, take him down. Great caravan morale causes two willpower bonus in the battle. Your leadership is allowed ample supplies in the caravan. Okay, whatever. Thanks. Um, okay, it's not too bad. It's not too bad at all.
Wait, what's going on? Oh, we're fighting. Okay. I thought I was choosing my uh, starting positions. Um, what does this do again? Guys, go away. I don't care about this tutorial. I did strength and armor damage to the target and adjacent enemies. Yep. Cool. Good enough for me. Who's that? Nid? This will get his attention. Wait a second! It's the witch! Oh my god, I completely forgot about her! What have you done? It worked! Bulwark, hear me! What was her name? The witch? Wait, before we continue, I want to try to remember her name. Everyone thought she died in the first game, and I knew she was still alive, but then she just never came back, so I I forgot about her. Uh, it begins with a Y. I think it definitely begins with a Y. I can't remember. The clansman's chatter as Juno converses with the dazed Bulwark quietly. How can grabs your attention? Get ready for a confusing conversation. Eirsa! He motions to Eirsa, one of the Prince Ludin's bodyguard, who is wiping her pitch-covered hand with a rag on the, her way over to you. Good timing, witch. How is it you're still alive? Tusk, tusk, Hakon. Me being a witch was our secret. I'd hate to have to poison you. Whoever this woman is, she just completely stunned two Val within moments of each other. A friend of yours, King Hakon? King? Hakon attempts an enigmatic smile before answering you. Rook, meet Prince, Prince Ludin's bodyguard, Irsa. I presume she died when we lost her. Well met, if there's anything I can do. Irsa holds a finger over her lips to silence you. And then winks. You watch as she departs and finds Prince Ludin among the loitering clansmen. Strange, that one. Stranger than Bulwark being as tough as a damn sunder? Heh, I should have mentioned he's a berserk. Probably the last of his kind after Einartoft. The Val King laughs at your blank look. Berserks lose themselves in a fight. They're as strong as cold bears and just as wild. Hard to say if they're a friend or foe in that fight. So a mender magics us over a chasm and you two decide to kill each other? I wasn't going to let him take our supplies without a fight. Caught him trying to take off with supplies he tucked away. Couldn't let it happen. Cool anger glistens in Hakon's eyes when he looks at Bulwark. He's free to leave and some of those supplies are rightfully his. Fine, he can have some, but don't mistake that beast for the rest of us, Val. If Bulwark is stronger than you, he'll take your last bite of food and crumbs in your beard. Cast the hone into the air. Chapter 9. 